everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Behind the Curtain, where we get to explore the stories, passions, and insights into the, some of the best performances and artists around the world. Since the Tonys have happened, the Fashion Week in Paris and New York has happened, we have a special insider tonight to round out these exciting past few weeks that's all about the best fashion and costumes of Broadway, featuring one of our new contributors at Red curtain addict Spencer Howard. But before I welcome him on, I want to tell you about our new platform at redcurtainaddict.com. Take a look. Hey guys, it's Carrie and Parker from Red Curtain Addict, and we are so excited to lift the curtain and reveal a special project that we've been working on. We're launching a new platform that helps you discover, learn, and go to the best performing arts experiences that are happening in your city and online. Now that the theaters are open, we want you to have an easy experience to find the next performance to see, and it doesn't just stop there. So one of my favorite things with this new platform isn't just the ability to be able to search for events that you're looking for, but it's really discovering new things that you wouldn't know about through our arts recommendation engine based off of your personal preferences. So if you don't know what to search for or even how to get started, no problem. All you have to do is go to redcurtainag.com, click sign up and take a personalized quiz so that we can suggest which performance to see next. So come join us guys. We have a community of people and arts enthusiasts just like you that are looking to discover the new experiences in their city. So what are you waiting for? Go get started and go to that next performance. We have been working really hard to get this platform live and in your hands so that you can easily discover, learn, and go to the arts around you. And I'm excited for you to be a part of our arts community with all these amazing artists and art enthusiasts from around the world. So let's get to our special story with Spencer. Spencer recently met up with Tony Award nominee Max von Essen. He's known for his roles in American in Paris, Jesus Christ Superstar, Anastasia, just to name a few. And they got to walk through this recent showing of some of the best costumes on Broadway. Can you imagine just to see all the details that you sometimes don't get to see up close from the stage? And they walked around and I'm so excited to show you these highlights from his experience. Let's welcome on Spencer. Hey Spencer. Hey Carrie, how's it going? Oh, it's so good to see you. It's been a while. As well. How's the West Coast? Oh, it's, you know, kind of sunny. It's getting fall, but how's the East Coast? How's Broadway now that it's kind of opening back up. It's crazy. I mean, just walking through Times Square compared to how it was just a few months ago, it's absolutely insane. I mean, the number of people that are back in the city, people who are out, um, just bringing that energy back in is really fun to see. And the traffic matches. There's, <laughs> we went from we went from a lot of like, oh my god, the city is kind of empty. For those of us who stuck around, um, that was maybe the one silver lining of this whole thing was that you felt like you had the city to yourself. No more. Everyone is back. <laughs> and you have to make reservations now, right, for dinner. Got to make reservations again. No, it's 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 all good. I, I'm I'm super happy. And trust me, the restaurants in Midtown are super happy that Broadway's reopening, trust me. I bet, I bet it was very yeah. surreal, you know, you being in New York for so long and then seeing it can completely turn the page of, wow, well, there's no yeah. one here. There's yeah. where the culture of the city, which is the arts, it's the food, it's the people, right? And so to see those things kind of be shut off for so long, I bet it's really great to see it back. Yeah, it, it was definitely, it, it was interesting to be here through the whole thing. We didn't leave at all. So to watch everything kind of, you know, just quiet down, see the city all empty and now watching it build back up. And all of a sudden, of course, everyone's starting to move back in and you're like, hey, everyone, welcome yep. back. We've been here. <laughs> yep. Oh, man. <laughs> but yeah. Well, I am very excited for our community to meet you, Spencer. We've worked together for a few years on projects in the past, yep. um, and you're going to be, you know, joining us for a lot of unique insiders that's happening on Broadway and in New York and at the Symphony and all these different things. So, I'm so excited to to talk to you about your most recent experience. Um, around costumes and fashion. But before we get there, I want them to kind of hear a bit about your experience on Broadway and your musical background. So tell us a little bit about that insider at you. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, I am born and raised in New York. Uh, I'm originally from Westchester, but I actually grew up watching my dad. Uh, he was a lawyer, but his like hobby was doing theater. So I actually grew up watching my dad perform and thought it was a completely normal way to spend your time. So uh, as soon as I was able to, I started you know, dabbling in that community theater life. Um, but then I decided I wanted to do it for a living. And I went to NYU, studied theater at Tisch. And then pretty much, I'm very fortunate that from the moment I graduated, I kind of worked nonstop. Um, I did 13 productions of West Side Story. Wow. Okay. 13, that was my bread and butter. That was probably, um, you know, my, my I was gonna say biggest accomplishment. That was the that was the thing that made me the most money. Let's be honest about it. Um, but uh, but yeah, I traveled the world, um, toured both Europe, Asia, and America, and I also ended up doing Legally Blonde, the musical directed by Jerry Mitchell, which was an amazing time. That's how I met my wife, and so I'm very thankful. Thank you, Jerry. Um, I had no but, idea that was Jerry Mitchell. I had no yeah. idea. That's amazing. Yeah, no, he was great. He was great. I loved getting to work with him and Dennis Jones and Mark Bruni, um, all guys that are continuing to just absolutely destroy it in New York right now. So um, they're all great guys. But yeah, that it, you know, I spent I spent about a decade uh, working professionally as an actor in theater. Uh, and now I've actually transitioned into owning my own business, still obviously centered around theater. Um, so still kind of keeping my hand in the entertainment world, but on top of obviously getting to work with Red Curtain Addict. Um, yeah, I've got my own, my own production company. I am so excited to hear about that because Broadway Booker, which is your company, we're going to find out a little bit more about that later, which is a yeah. fantastic company. I want to talk about that experience on stage though, Spencer, before we yeah. get to that, because it's really what we're talking today is about the fashion of Broadway, right? The Tonys has happened. It's been fashion week. And so, yeah. you know, the, the last, it's almost one of the last stages that comes to this rehearsal experience. Right? They call it dress rehearsal because you're dressed in full costume. Yeah. I'm curious, like, what was that moment like from you know learning the music to staging, but then finally putting on that costume? What does that do for you as a performer? Oh, I mean, it, it, it truly is that last, it's that icing on the cake for your character. And um, I know we'll talk about it a bit later, but, you know, you you rehearse in whatever, your Lululemons, your sneakers, you're in whatever you can for rehearsal. Um, unless you have a really complicated piece that might uh, interfere with your choreography or even just moving around stage, then for a lot of times for those pieces, you might actually be given something to rehearse in that mimics it. Um, that's also uh, why a lot of I know a lot of uh, women tend to wear their skirts in rehearsal so that they could feel what it's like even before they get an actual costume piece. Um, but there is just that special moment where you put the costume on for the first time as the character. And you know, keep in mind, you do, you'll, you'll have fittings before that where they'll put things on you, you'll see how you feel. But once you're really starting to delve into the character and the show, and then you get the costume piece on, it just kind of, it brings you into that world, truly, like physically, you feel like you're brought into that world. Um, and it just kind of rounds out the character for that last piece. And when you, it, it's like con in conjunction, typically you will get your costume and you'll, uh, you know, you'll have your like sits probe where you'll hear the orchestra play for the first time. A lot of times those are very close to each other, uh, if not at the same time. And it's just, you cannot help but feel the emotion, just just being in the costume, hearing the music. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I can relate to it in somewhat way. It's called Halloween, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is coming up, right? And so like, you know, everybody that's watching, maybe you haven't been on stage. This is one thing that when I put on a costume of something, I like, get into character a little bit. And so I can see how 
just be amplified a hundred percent on stage and then hearing the music and having a cast that's all in that same mindset right I just can't imagine how fun that could be too yeah yeah although you will find I think uh in the Broadway community uh when Halloween comes that tends to be an evening that a lot of actors like to take off from dressing up they're like I do this for a living this is fun, you know, unless you're like going to a, like a cool party, which, which you know, you can get dressed in something different. Um, Halloween is viewed def- very differently in the theater community, I think, in New York. I could see that. I could see that. Yeah. They're like, hey, listen, like, I, just, I get in costume every day. I kind of want to- It's another day of playing dress up, all right. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love that. Well, yeah. you know, I want to talk about your recent experience in New York. Mm-hmm. You got to meet up with Max, who, you know, has been in several Broadway shows and you guys got to take a look at some of these special costumes. I'm curious, you know, what was it like seeing some of these pieces? Because even in the audience, you're, you know, you do have that barrier from like being up close, right? It's not like a film where you see all the little details. You can see them from far away, which they still look great. But I'm curious, I'm like, what was it like to see those so close up in action? Yeah, I, and I think you you kind of nailed it right there, which is, I was blown away by, it, it was just a reminder of how much detail goes into these costumes that sadly, I, I also feel like you can't really appreciate it from an audience. You know, you, you see it, you know, very few people sit close enough where they can actually see those details. Um, and so there was a little bit, I was like, oh, I, I kind of feel sad. I wish more people would get to see these costumes in the detail that I'm getting to see them right now. It, it truly, I, I swear, and I, I've done this for over a decade as an actor. I felt honored to get to be able to see some of these costumes so up close. Uh, it, it really blew my mind. And you could see even, you know, Max, when, when I was walking around with him, just the awe that, that we had, you know, and some costumes look so simple, seem like they, they're just, oh, you know, it looks like maybe it was just something even taken off the shelf somewhere. But then you get to see them up close. You get to see the detail and realize someone stitched this from hand, every panel was made from hand. Mm-hmm. Like that's really mind boggling, especially some of these sequin costumes. You know, that's, that's what I love about this behind the curtain is that it's really, we see the finished pro- project products in a lot of different ways, right? And we're like, look at this, it's awesome. But let's like step back a lot of different steps. And you think about, if you can just picture in your mind that person individually stitching that and when mm-hmm. it comes together and fitting and then the person wearing it and feeling like okay I'm ready for it and then the orchestra comes on and then the curtain rises so it's just like all these different things it's so good to think about like the the community that got behind a show to make it happen yeah. all the hours right think about think about every movie you've ever gone to and you can name every star that was in the movie. You can maybe name the director as well, but someone as important as the cinematographer, you might, you, you probably don't know their name, but you watch the credits that roll at the end of a movie and you realize how many hands touch a movie. It's the same as Broadway. There are so many hands that go into touching a show to make it what it is and it is what it is. Our society and our world is what it is. The stars on stage tend to get the most attention, but really when you stop and think about just how many opinions, how much work, sweat, hours go into, you know, building every piece of set, even the props, you know, making sure that the props are painted to look the right way, same thing. And, um, and you walk around, you realize, just how many people are needed to costume a show. Let's, let's say, you know, I, I don't even know offhand what the real average would be, but let's say the average is 25 people on stage in a show and they each wear, let's say on average, five costumes. That's so much work, mm-hmm. so much work. Mm-hmm. Um, so you really walking around this exhibit, you really get the appreciation the the exhibit itself feels like it appreciates 
the the art that goes into it and you just cannot help but go right right wow wow even people who are involved you're like you're blown away by it I love that it's not I mean it's an amazing moment the one thing that I can relate to is orchestration where everyone comes in to play their note right it's a singular mm -hmm. note but when you hear an orchestra, it sounds like a sound, right? A great orchestral moment. And so it's the same thing, right? When it comes to Broadway, this, is, I, this giant collaboration, all these different people from different backgrounds coming in to achieve this one moment in time. This is what I love about Broadway. Yeah. Um, Spencer, I'm curious, like, what were some of your favorites that you got to see while you were there? Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, we saw a little bit of the six costumes, and I mean, I will say the six costumes are probably a few of the costumes that from the audience, you can just tell they look cool. You can mm -hmm. tell they look awesome, and then you get up close and you go, nope, no, nope, I was right, they're awesome. They look incredible. Um, so th those, I was not surprised how much they blew me away. Um, and they just look badass. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that here, but oh, they, totally they are. look badass. Yeah, you, got to see, you got to see some wicked costumes, you told me, right? Yep, yep, the wicked costumes. Um, once again, seeing them up close, Elphaba, from the audience, it just kind of looks like she's wearing like a black dress. You get up close, really up close, and you see all the details into her dress, sewn into her dress. I wish everyone could get to see that because I feel like the way that the way that it is to be in an audience member with a black costume, you don't really get to see all those details. It, it was incredible. And Frozen, uh, seeing those costumes up close, um, th they look beautiful, magical on stage, and even more so, even more so when you're standing right in front of them. Uh, all the sparkles, all the sparkles, all the. I yep. just wear like a frozen costume every day with like a cat. Yeah, just you know? like the fine mesh, the 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 details that are sewn in. Um, it, it's it's beautiful. I wanted to wear them. I couldn't. They wouldn't let me put them on. Dang. I don't think I'd fit well. <laughs> Probably not, Spencer. You're pretty tall. Yeah. Um, well, we're seeing some of these clips, and it looks like such a good time. And yeah. you actually have some of these highlights with Max, right? Yeah. No, I I have zero fun with Max. He's not fun to be around. He's not a gentleman and he is terrible looking. He's just really, um, it's really hard to hang around him, mostly uh, for my self-esteem. No, I love Max. Uh, he, he was, he played Tony in one of my 13 West Side Stories. Um, he's a great guy, love walking around with Max and he's just been doing this for a long time. And so I appreciate and I trust his opinions and his thoughts on the industry, I mean, not many people right now uh, have the depth of knowledge that he does about the Broadway industry. So getting to walk through this exhibit with him was so fun and getting to hear the stories, you know, especially Max always looks good in costumes in every costume I've ever seen him wear. He looks fantastic. Um, but it was great to just hear his stories about getting dressed, his amazing costume changes, some of the secrets behind uh you know his his costumes it was it was a lot of fun oh my gosh okay you guys well let's just take a look at some of these highlights <laughs> Don't you, did you ever think like when there's a show like, I always wished that I could bring some of my closest friends or family who weren't in the industry, like backstage. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, you know, I feel like you can do a tour and show people's costumes up close, but like you wish people could see in the audience, yeah. have that experience to not only like watch what's going on backstage, like the backstage choreography, but to get like this close to see the detail. I know, the I know. Yeah, the, so, so much crazy. of the detail ends up getting missed. Yeah. By almost the majority of the you people who are in the I audience. I mean, you appreciate it because they're stunning on stage. Not everyone knows this, that when you are a swing or an understudy, you need your own version of a costume. So if there's a, ver if there, if it cost $100,000 to make a costume, they have to make a second one for anyone who comes into the show. 
so you know wow. if, you, if you book a gig and they have to make you that costume yeah you, and it gets you made it. and it's it pressure, gets as competitive too because like I, I did Anastasia which was the the costumes were just like absolutely stunning mm -hmm. um, and they so there were some dresses that would cost hundred and fifty thousand dollars and you would have there would be if you if they're going to replace someone to take over that role they would more than likely have to fit in that gown yeah. or with just a subtle alteration because it's just economically impossible yeah. yep. to rebuild some of those extravagant ones. Yeah. Do you have like a favorite costume you've ever worn? I know we've talked about a couple that you've Yeah, I mean, worn. I've had some good ones, but I always go back to, because I mean, we're literally talking about this, but in American in Paris, which is all Bob Crowley, who did the costumes and set designs. But like, because I'm, I'm, you know, a throwback. Like I, I dreamed of being in like a big MGM musical or a huge Broadway right. musical spectacular number, right? And I got to do that in American in Paris, but he starts like kind of, He's in tux pants, like a fraying, multicolored vest, and then and a little bow tie that's kind of askew. But and he, I'm like failing in the number, right? But then it kind of transforms into my mind. And I, I, it's a becomes this fantasy sequence, and I'm like imagining I'm in Radio City Music Hall, and a line of guys in top out and tails come out, and a line of girls, feathers, and rhinestones, and they kind of envelop me, and I have like three or four seconds to have a, to get a full. Um, tux with tail, so everything is all stitched together and just then magnets. Like there's the vest, oh, really? there's the jacket, everything. Wow. And then the bow tie is magnet off, and then a new one magnet on, and then they hand me the top hat, and then suddenly it's like a kick line. And it's oh, like within seconds, I go from this kind of like struggling moment to Radio City Musical, and the lights pop on, and I'm full, to you know, top hat, Please tail. Please tell me that got applause. When yes, that yes, because oh, it's so like theatrical yeah. magic. So it was like just a classic costume but because of the transition and how we had to figure it out and how long during tech it took then it, it was just it, it's just as much choreography as oh, any part gosh, of the show yeah. is getting what hand is going to be where where's yeah. my hand where's my hand where's my head like how it's, has to be how it's built so that you can do the transition and the costume change on stage like it's not even just about the costume right it's about how you got there Oh. on stage, how they built it, how intricate it is. And suddenly we're talking, you know, as actors, it's like you do all this work, but until you have that, that's like that final touch, right. then you're in the world. Like it's oh. unbelievable. That's something, I mean, how rare is that? That the director is the costume designer. You know, Julie Taymor designed The Lion King and directed. Is that- That never happens. Is she the only one who's done this? Yeah, I don't know anyone else. I mean, I'm sure the directors might have hands in it, but she of course, but designed I didn't, it. I, I really thought that through. It says, large in part to the sensational costumes designed by Academy and Tony Award winner, Julie Taymor, who also who also, who also directed to it. direct yeah. the show. Wow. I hadn't realized that. That's phenomenal. Yeah. So this, so this is probably an early stage. Yeah. Like, that's what's fun when you like, you with a show from that early on, and you know, you go to fittings that are like this, just yeah. to see what it's gonna be like, right. and then the and then you arrive in previews. Yeah, just all of these little steps that get towards the final product that you don't think about every little step of the way. Just like a number gets changed, just like yeah. lyrics get changed. And these are years. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Making. And truly, the the thought that goes into it, the the. The finishing, that shaping, the molding of the world, yeah. and even something as specific as what time is it? You know, we, you always talk mm -hmm. a, a, like, okay, going into an audition or something, you're like, think about it. What, what, where are you coming from? Where are you going to? What time is it? You're like, those kind of things, a costume designer has the hand in by, oh, the one suspenders down because yeah. we're at this point of the night. Yeah, it's I'm so great. I'm so blown away at the amount of work they do. When you go to their studios, just walls, walls. covered of research yeah. and swatches and ideas. I love and then it. the actress does all this work and then steps into this and you know, yeah. the second she puts this on, she's like, okay, places. Yeah, here I go, like, I'm ready. That's it. Uh, she, your posture changes, yeah. you, know what, you know what year it is. It's incredible. Early on I was like, I'm going back. Yeah. I'm supporting, I'm not in a show, but I am, I'm ready for Broadway to be back and I I'm gonna it. get out there and support it. Yeah, I've, I've, I've seen two things, a, a play and then something regionally, and it's just, they're being back in a room yeah. full of people, yeah. seeing live theater in front of you. I will admit I cried 
pretty much from the start of the show to the end. Just I was so like emotional yeah. just to be back in that space. I know. With people who also wanted to be there because that's, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, the energy was electric. Jeez, you got to see so many different costumes. You... It was it was great. I mean, we we actually you can't really tell from this, but we went through twice because we we felt like there was just so much to see that actually going through once wasn't enough. So we did we, we went through that twice. Wow, wow! I mean, so many different types of shows, um, and I love the insight talking about how his costumes came together mm -hmm. uh, for American in Paris. I had no idea that there was magnets. I always wondered like, how did they do that? Is this magic? Um, I mean, it is magic, but it, it's yeah. really interesting. Yeah, between, um, uh, there's a lot of tricks for stage costumes because just like choreography, a costume change has to be this seamless event that occurs. And we, we talk about it a little bit in, in the interview, but the, when, when a cast member runs off stage, first of all, an onstage costume change is a thing of magic. Like Max, Max talked about with the, the buttons, sometimes it might be Velcro that we use for some of those quick changes. Um, but I wish people could be backstage to see a quick change. A quick change is usually something that takes place in 30 seconds to maybe if you're lucky you have a minute to entirely change your costume from one to the other. And typically what happens, you run off stage and your clothing is in a very strategically laid pile right off stage. And there are five people waiting for you. And I, I, as a man, I never had to deal with a wig. Actually, I, that's a lie. I did have to wear a wig. I played a woman in one show, uh, but there's someone ready with your new wig someone ready, you know, you take your pants off, someone, you step in the new pants, someone else is, and you are literally, it is like you're a child being dressed to go out in the snow by your parents, and you just stand there, and everyone has to throw everything on you, and it is a dance, it is a choreographed movement, and if something doesn't go right, it, I mean, it has to be perfect every time for some of these quick changes, and, oh. or, like Max said, or you could just have buttons on everything and they just rip it off of you. Um, but a, yeah, it sounds like a like a race pit. Like you know, you think about the race cars where they just have to hundred percent, and then the, the person just sitting there, and then they're off to the races, right? A hundred percent, and it is a hundred percent that level of stress too. It is like, and and sometimes, hey, listen, sometimes your costume, you know, your wardrobe person that you work with every day takes a vacation and their replacement has to come in and learn how to make sure everything is exactly how you need it. It happens. I mean, I have absolutely missed costume changes for one reason or another, not because someone messed up, but you know, maybe a, a, an item was missing. One thing was missing. It's crazy. It's one of the most exciting, stressful parts of a show is the quick change. Yeah, I can't imagine that. And like, let's just think about, you know, the, the men, the mental state that you're in as an actor and actress is that you are you're running off stage and you're like okay what's my next line what mood do i need to be in and mm -hmm. then as all of this is happening to your body you're like okay i gotta be in this spot and i gotta like i can't even imagine what like zero time doing. you have zero time to mentally get ready because you are just trying to like make sure your hand gets in the glove the right way or you, you know, you you put your head through the shirt hole in the right way. It, it's, and then you have to turn around and run right back on stage. Oh my you know, god! Have, that's how. But that's how also deep your character has to be too. You have to be ready to pop right into it. Yeah. But yeah, and then like Max said, you, you know, you saw some of the clips of Max too. He, it, you have to look put together. It has to. It can't look like it's a tearaway costume. It has to look like a real legit piece mm -hmm. of clothing so mm -hmm. it's a challenge yeah when you were saying like velcro and magnets and things like that 
you, from an audience perspective, you want it to look quality, right? Like you mm-hmm. want it to look like it's this time period or it is the piece. And these, like you mentioned, $150,000 for some of these gowns and outfits. I mean, they look stunning. So the, yeah. the artistry just even hide those things. So it doesn't look like there are this, these touches of magic that you can just pull away, right? Yeah. Ready, which is- yeah. There's a, there's a great uh, story during Mean Girls where, um, where the main character is in a Halloween costume and then in an instant, the Halloween costume disappears and she's in street clothing. And it's an incredible tearaway costume change. And one night she was wearing like a t-shirt underneath it. The t-shirt went with the Halloween costume and she was just in a bra on stage. And literally like someone had to like grab her sweatshirt to just put over herself. And of course the audience goes crazy because audiences love those like, crazy moments that are clearly not supposed to happen but literally her just whole shirt came off with the entire costume Could you imagine her face just being like oh my gosh and you're like uh i have to stay in character she had like, no idea she oh, had no oh. idea well, so what else had to bring her a shirt because it's it's she's used to the feeling of something being ripped off of her so to her it just it maybe felt weird but she had no idea that her shirt was completely ripped off of her. And, oh gosh! And then one of the characters is like, "Oh, here you go. Here's a sweatshirt." Here, like, Why? Oh, oh. <laughs> ah, thank you so much. Oh, I love I love it. Yeah, live what theater. Is, what are some of the shows coming up that you you know recommend now that Broadway is coming open alive again, which is so exciting? Sure. Based Absolutely. On costumes. What are you, what would you say? Like you got to go see these costumes and the show, obviously. <laughs> yes. Right. Well, uh, right now, here's uh, I'll, I'll start by saying, come see anything. Please, just come to New York, see anything. Obviously, this is a we're doing something about costumes today, but there's no wrong answer. Please come to the city, see some theater. There's so much open now. There's a lot open, so you have choices as well. But definitely six for the costumes, absolutely love. Um, And Moulin Rouge, Moulin Rouge is pretty fantastic. I mean, if we just did it on their costumes alone, you should go see it. But on top of it, it is a great show. It is so exciting. Um, Super happy about uh, how that turned out because I am obsessed with the movie. So yeah, um, I'm very so, happy about it. It's going to be one of my first Broadway shows. I That was the one that I saw right before Broadway ended. Mm. And I was so blown away. I remember thinking, this is Broadway from like the costumes, like you mentioned, but just the experience. So I think yeah. when I come to New York uh, very soon, it's going to be one of my first to see again. It's amazing. Yeah. And one of the last things I saw before the shutdown I don't remember offhand what the reopening date is, but Mrs. Doubtfire seeing Rob McClure go back and forth is absolutely incredible. What they did, what they're able to do on stage, obviously in the movie, they actually have time to like make the mask and everything look regular. Oh my God, what they're able to do on stage with Rob McClure is is pretty magical. So that's another really good one. I didn't think about that because, you know, you, you watch these movies behind the scenes of movies and you see the, the person go into the structuring of their face mm-hmm. and it takes hours. They go to these trailers for hours a day. Right. There is no hours on Broadway. It's minutes, just like you heard Spencer. So I am curious yeah. to see, that would be really good. Yeah, huh. it's incredible. I mean, Rob in general is just one of the most incredible actors of our time. So uh, see it anyway, but just for for what they're able to create on stage for that iconic movie, so good. Uh, okay, you guys, so go see any and everything, obviously. the art everything. So excited. I know all the actresses and actors and musicians and everyone involved, including the costume designers, are excited to show their work. And there's also something else coming up, right, Spencer, that you're doing with Broadway Booker in New York City, and I want to hear more about this. Tell us about it. Oh. Oh, uh, oh, please, please allow me. Yeah, on October 18th, uh, we are putting on an in-person concert at Birdland Jazz Club on 44th Street, iconic New York City jazz spot. So just a, a 
I'll keep it totally brief, but Broadway Booker, we are a mobile-friendly website where you can book a Broadway star for your private event. You can do it from your smartphone. It takes less than five minutes, and boom, you're done. So um, we, during the pandemic, we kind of pivoted to more virtual stuff. So we are still doing virtual voice lessons, Q&As, things like that. But now that things are reopening, we're getting back into our in-person booking offerings. So if you want a Broadway star to come sing a concert at your birthday, at your wedding, sing a few songs, we're happy to help. So to celebrate us kind of relaunching our in-person booking, we're doing this concert at Birdland to feature just a handful of our stars that are available to book uh, through our website. Kate Rockwell, Teal Wicks, Erica Henningsen, a ton more. Um, we are also, for those of you who are on the West Coast or basically anywhere other than New York City, we're gonna be live streaming it as well for all of you guys who can't join us in person um, because we are tech savvy. So come in person, live stream it, doesn't matter. We'd love to have you October 18th at Birdland. It's the Broadway Booker in-person concert. Oh. I'm looking forward to it. I, I will be in New York before then, but to see it on stream, I'm glad that you're doing a streaming uh, yeah. option because you're right. There's a lot of people that don't live in New York or like, oh, I just was there. I just missed it. So this yeah. is a way for us to see it, even if we're not there in person. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, that sounds so much fun. Spencer, yeah. it's been a blast just to get to see you. Um, I know, you too. <laughs> and hear about this really fun experience that you had in New York City and, and hear about more about these costumes. You know, there's, we all enjoy a good costume, but just to go in that a little bit further and see that detail and hear about those um, insider little tips of how it comes together. It's been just a blast. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, no, my pleasure. I hope they do more things that showcase more elements of theater from stagecraft or, you know, props, things like that. There's just so many elements that come together. So uh, I hope there's more exhibits like this and I can come show it to y'all. See, that's what we're going to do. All right, Spencer, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thanks, it's been fun. All right, awesome. Have a great day, everybody. For our next episode, we'll be going behind the curtain of the making of Steven Spielberg's West Side Story that's coming out in December. I'll be sitting down with Ilda Mason, who plays Luce, Anita's friend in the film, and she also made her Broadway debut in West Side Story in 2019. So I will be kind of finding out what's the difference of doing a Broadway show on stage and doing that exact show, very similar to that show, on film with Steven Spielberg. So this will be a special episode. It'll be on October 26th at 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and 8.30 p.m. at Eastern Standard Time on our website, redcurtainact.com and on our social channels. You guys, it's been so much fun. I look forward to seeing you next time.